Well, turning overseas now, Russia's president says he's prepared to end the war in Ukraine, but claims the United States isn't. Vladimir Putin and the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, held formal talks around a possible peace deal on the second day of Xi's controversial state visit. Our Asia correspondent, Brent O'Halloran, joins us live now from Taipei. Brent, what were the key takeaways as you see them from, from day two? Well, there were some positive comments made, but there weren't any uh, real breakthroughs. Presidents Xi and Putin signed a joint declaration to deepen the comprehensive strategic partnership. Now, that's pretty broad, and it includes pledges to increase bilateral trade, which hit record levels last year, up by around 30 per cent. But on the peace plan for U the Ukraine war, President Putin said Xi's 12-point proposal could be the basis for peace. However, he says the West isn't prepared to end what he sees as a US proxy war and instead wants to, in his words, fight to the last Ukrainian. Of course, we did not ignore the situation around Ukraine. We believe that many of the provisions of the peace plan put forward by China are consonant with Russian approaches and can be taken as the basis for a peaceful settlement. I would like to point out that in the Ukrainian settlement, we consistently follow the principles of UN Charter and stand on an objective and unbiased position. We are firmly standing on the true side of history. Despite Xi's words there, there are claims that China is not neutral nor best place to broker a ceasefire. The White House today repeated concerns it has that such a deal would be too beneficial for Russia. A spokesperson was asked whether the US President Joe Biden is prepared to speak with his Chinese counterpart about bringing an end to the war. The president wants to keep the lines of communication open with China. Nothing's changed about that. And as I said yesterday, at the appropriate time, uh, we'll pursue another conversation with President Xi. Xi and Putin also attended a state reception and she invited President Putin to visit China. There was also no firm commitment on the proposed new gas pipeline from Russia to China via Mongolia, which would further increase this sort of semi-alliance and further help Russia in skirting the sanctions imposed since the start of its invasion of Ukraine. Ash. In Brent, meantime, there was a special appearance across the border with a, another major Asian power leader making a, a visit. Yeah, Chinese, uh, sorry, Jap Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met uh, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev and toured the town of Bucha, where civilians were killed by Russian forces. This was his first visit to Ukraine, and he's the last of the G7 leaders to do so. Prime Minister Kishida invited Zelensky to attend the G7 summit virtually in May, and he strongly denounced Russia's illegal invasion. So it's interesting timing. These twin visits highlight the stark difference in Japan and China's response to this war in Ukraine. Now, also, we have some pictures of Russian warplanes conducting flights over the Sea of Japan purportedly this morning. Now, these flights follow US and Japanese ones in the same area two days ago. I'm sure there would be different interpretations of this action given the events of the past 24 hours, Ash. Brent, appreciate the update. Thank you.